Yo guys, what is up? It is Alex or Black Eye here, and let's be honest, who here actually reads the ability descriptions? I know I don't. I just load into a game and then just press buttons until things happen. And sometimes even if you do read the ability descriptions, there are just things about an ability that aren't necessarily listed. So because of that, here are 17 things you might not have known about Smite. In relevant clips, there will be an input viewer in the bottom left, so if you aren't exactly sure how I did something, just reference the controller in the bottom left. You can steal obelisk offerings with a decoy or a clone. I'm assuming this works with every type of decoy or clone, but it does work with Morrigan's third ability as well as Wukong's ultimate. Mercury's passive doesn't go up when jumping. When walking around, Mercury gains a physical power bonus for his next basic attack. But if you walk around while jumping, since he's not technically on the ground, his passive won't go up. So yeah, try to refrain from jumping when playing Mercury. Hades' third ability can heal allies. If Hades is near a minion wave and an ally is close by, and Hades uses his three, it will heal the allies. This is especially useful in Assault, and I honestly didn't know this for the longest time. Now let's talk about Ganesha. I feel like most people know that Ganesha's first ability increases the damage that nearby allied gods can deal, but it also works on Hand of the Gods. So if you're using Hog and a buff, make sure you use your one first. I also heard it increases minion damage, but this was kind of hard to test, so I'm just gonna leave that up in the air for now. The next one about Ganesha, I'm surprised a lot of people didn't know, but Ganesha's three can go through player-made walls. So if you have her Odin cage or a Ymir walls you off, just dash through it. Kuzinbo's second ability, I'm fairly certain, is the only ability that can be used while crowd-controlled. This includes silences as well. Now let's talk about some abilities you can cancel early. Izanami's first ability, her auto-attack stim, can be canceled early. This is pretty useful if you pop the stim and then an enemy tries to use like a minion or another god to body block. You can just cancel it because Izanami's normal autos go through them anyway. You can do this by hitting whatever the cancel fire button is. I believe on controller the default is B and on mouse and keyboard the default is the right mouse button. Another ability you can cancel early is Cthulhu Dash. This is similar to Izanami one, where you have to press whatever your cancel fire button is. I couldn't get it consistently by pressing the B button one time, so I just pretty much spammed it the second that I casted the ability and it worked every time. In a similar vein, you can stop Alplosh's one early. To do this, you just hit the same button you used to fire the ability. This is especially useful if you're being run down by an enemy, and you're just trying to eat the minions up to get health and mana back, or if you're just trying to get close AoE damage around you. This one's a little bit different, but if you're holding someone with Atlas' second ability, if you jump, then they'll just be thrown straight to the ground. I'm not really sure why you'd do this, but it's fun to know. With Freya's ultimate ability, you don't have to press the fire button for every single time you want to fire an ultimate shot. You can just hold the button down. This is technically the fastest way to do it, but I do believe it is a bit more inaccurate. But if somebody CC'd or not moving much, this is the best way to go about it. Now let's talk about Merlin. I can't believe a lot of people didn't know this, but you can choose which stance Merlin switches into when you cast the ult. A lot of people in the thread I talked about earlier didn't know this, and it made it very hard for them to play Merlin. So yeah, as you can see in the bottom right of my screen, you just press either the first, second, or third ability button to choose which stance you want to go into. Also about Merlin, his first ability does extra damage upon hitting a slowed enemy. Outside of niche scenarios, just try to make sure you're starting with your second ability, because it does slow them, which makes your first ability even stronger. E set Spirit Ball does more damage at max range. Maybe not something you should be shooting for every single time, but it is nice to know in niche scenarios. Abilities have individual casting types. You can hit the start button, go to abilities, and you can select which casting type you want for each individual ability. This is extremely useful for people that play on normal or quick cast, as there are a bunch of abilities that are just instantly better upon using them on instant cast. For example, I don't see a reason to have Chonga 2 or Ravana 2 on anything except instant cast. I understand that this is more of a preference type thing, but for certain abilities like I described earlier, I don't see a downside to putting some on instant cast. You can blink in the middle of an auto attack animation. This is another one of those niche scenarios, and I only seeing it being consistently good on like Kabraken, but it does work with every god. Not only can you purchase Ratatoskr's acorn out of base, but it doesn't cancel your back animation. I am very ashamed to say that I had a rank 10 Ratatoskr before I realized you could even purchase the acorn outside of base. Thank you guys for watching. Comment something you learned in this video, or comment something you want to see on another episode similar to this. Maybe you have a fun fact or a niche fact that not many people know about. So feel free to leave a comment, because I want to make more of these videos. As always, I'm very active on Twitter and Twitch. My Twitter is Smite, and my Twitch is TheBiakai. I stream five times a week, and I'd love to see you guys come by.